Good evening, Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for May 2nd, 2022. 6.30 p.m. Good evening, council, administrators, and our audience. Thank you for visiting with us. Uh, Ms. Burner, if you'd call roll, please. Yes, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay is absent. And Councilman Rodewald. Here. Six members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Chief Trustee. Right. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings, many favors, and thank you for this this time to meet for our council, Father. And we pray for your direction and your guidance, and we pray for your protection over our, our first responders and our city. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, moving on. I need action on the uh, minutes for the uh, April 18th, uh, 2022. Okay. Ms. Rebel? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Council, any discussion on those minutes? All right, ready? Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. And Councilman Rodewald? Yes. And it's accepted six here. All right, and moving on to the city manager report. Good evening, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, I got a kind of a short one, uh, but we'll go through the discussion topics. Uh, economic development web webpage. Uh, this is super cool. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson did get the website done. Uh, tomorrow I'll be emailing council the link to view it. It is not live yet to the general public. We need to get that link linked to our website, um, but the person who does our website is uh, not available right now. So as soon as that is done, we'll actually have it live for the public to see, but he's done a fantastic job with it. We're excited to let you guys see that. But I will definitely email that link tomorrow to you guys or tonight when I get home. Another exciting thing, uh, we are looking into changing from a .NET to a .gov. Um, most municipalities in the state of Ohio have that oh.ous.org or .gov or .gov website. So we've been a .NET for a very long time, so he's kind of move us in a more professional direction with our website address. There's a lot of paperwork that goes with it, done a lot of backing configuration work. Uh, so as soon as that's done, we'll definitely let council know. Uh, we do have a joint special meeting coming up at Bethel Township. I do believe that's Friday the 13th at 6.30 p.m. Um, I have emailed uh, council some uh, annexation stuff for the Type 2 expedited annexation. I want to go ahead and attach that for the record tonight so the general public could have that. I'm also working on another sheet that uh, actually details annexation agreements. I'm going to get the council as well. Um, so we have that meeting. Um, do you guys want to have a meeting prior to that, or do you just want to maybe come in for an informational only session in my office or down at 101 in, in groups of two? As long as you don't maybe ask questions, I should think it should be okay as long as it's just informational only. Yeah. But that's, I'll leave it up to you guys to decide. I'm okay with just having groups of two or three at the most with information. Yeah. Okay. It would have to be like informational only. We can't like discuss any business. Right. But it'd be a good lesson just to get together and go through the steps. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good to me. Good. Sounds good. Okay. So uh, we'll set that up next week and then get that. Uh, I want to have Jake see if he can be available for that sit-in as well. Okay. Um, Mayor's Court. We are so close. So we are waiting on the doors to be done. They're about done. We have to have a stamp uh, embosser that goes on paper. That is being constructed from scratch down at Dayton Stencil. Uh, then we have one more final meeting. So I'm anticipating June, second, third week of June, that we'll actually be able to hear court cases. So it's been a long process. We learned a lot during it, but we're happy we're so close. There's light at the end of the tunnel with that. Um, under work in progress, we have council retreat examples and suggestions. I took some time today just to kind of look at any, uh, look at um, uh, just a basic Google search. And what it looks like is, when these councils go on these retreats, they're discussing a few concepts, and that is basically something financial, like go into detail about your budget, which we do that every year with the budget work session, but I think this would allow for more in-depth time with it. And they also look at the strategic plan as far as a comp use plan. That's what a lot of them do. Some of them go away, some of them kind of stay local. That's for you guys to decide. We do have a $5,000 budget for you guys for that this year. Um, I would like to see almost like a hybrid of what I just said, but on top of that too, 
um, like a basic 101 of our form of government. Get someone in here that has 20, 30 plus years experience, that maybe they're a consultant now, that can explain a little bit better of my role, your role, just so we're all on the same page with our form of government. Um, and uh, what I, another thing I noticed too is um, a lot of these council do the retreats yearly, and they usually have them in January and February and March, and that is to orient new council members that are, are newly elected or appointed. Um, so that's another thing council should keep in mind. If we just do these regularly at a certain time of year, maybe January and February, to accommodate the new members, I think that would be a win-win for everyone. Because when you're new and you haven't been in, this, in that role before, there's a lot of documentation that needs to go on as far as your sunshine training, you know, the big important documents that we've had here at the city, and then some other state stuff that they make you do as well. So those are just some ideas to keep in mind. I'm going to continue on looking for some stuff, but maybe by the next meeting, council just think about what they want to do as far as location. Do you want to stay close? Do you want to go so far away? And then any other kind of things that you see that you want to get addressed, and then we'll start coordinating everything and get everything set and stone. Uh, boards and Commission Handbook still going through that. We'll have that done by the next meeting as well. Um, and again, we're working on some really good legislation pieces for you, um, updating uh, our indigenous burial policy, which I've mentioned a few times. We have community, code, community garden code inclusion. Uh, the planning board and Derek have been working on some code rewrite to accommodate the community garden. They are about done with that, so we'll have something to present to you guys here soon. I also picked up on some golf cart conversations. I am starting to look at golf cart legislation to share with you as well and then the social media policy. So I don't have any motions requested, and then under the attachment summary, we do have the expedited type two annexation from the um, commissioner handbook. That's all I have. Any questions? Awesome. Council? <coughs> yes. Yeah. The uh, welcome to New Carlisle sign, you're coming in from the south. Mm -hmm. It's in pretty sorry shape. It is. Mm -hmm. Can we do something about it? Yeah, you guys had a, a allocated $40,000 to do some new sign repairs, so we're getting some other things started with the season that we have to get started, and we'll get to that. We haven't done anything with it because the weather hasn't been permitted, but now it's starting to get nicer out. We can actually do some stuff with it. Okay. On that same subject, if I can jump in, are, are we going to look at um, just refurbishing that, or what, does, what do you guys want? You know, I mean, 40000 isn't a, a lot if you're wanting to do a whole new reconstruction. And, you know, I know we've talked about mm -hmm. it a little bit. What do you guys want to see? Just out of curiosity, I mean, what do you would you like to see? We're just refurbish what we got, or would you like to see something new? I like that. Huh? Yeah. Whether it's salvageable or not. Yeah. We also need to work on the sign. I think it's a Yeah. So I mean, the one here is looking bad too. So. One of the things it's supposed to run. Okay. The one at Hensley Park, we're trying to determine who actually owns it before we do anything with it. But again, we haven't done anything with sign repairs because it's just now turning spring out. So they're all on our radar. Okay. One of the things I would like to look at, um, I think I sent pictures out to council, the city of Springfield, you can order a kit. They're not really, I mean, they're, they're basic stone kits. They look nice, you can configure them how you want. Uh, they're pretty simple. Um, they don't have any of the, you know, homage to the Honey Creek on there and stuff like that. It's something that we'd have to show council to, before I even order them. But it's, it's, now it's an opportunity, we look at these entryway signs. What do you want? Do you want something newer, that's stone, that's nice, or do you want to continue on with the current trend that we have? Um, so I'm going to work, start working on gathering information on the cost of those signs from Springfield so you guys can have a better understanding of what goes into that. We just haven't, like I said, done much with it because of the season. On the mayor's board, I just have one, Mr. Bridge, a mm -hmm. couple actually. Uh, the, uh, so it'll be handled at 101, correct? Yeah. You guys, you guys still have things you need to order to, to have that set up down there? No, we're pretty much golden. Um, like I said, we're still waiting on that embosser and then some other little stuff that we can get from like staples. No, but detectors, you guys we, have we, got, we got those. Got um, yeah, we got handheld wands. We ended up getting two of them. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of that stuff, the backing stuff has been done. Really waiting on the ADA compliant done with the doors. And then we're actually looking to get some more secure locks to keep people from going on, be able to access the police side um, because we do need to have access to the um, bathroom. So if you notice, remember there's that door right there. We got to try to figure out how we're going to prevent people from getting back to where these guys have a room and all that stuff. Is, so. And once that goes live, if you will, um, it'll be the same, obviously it's not the mayor, but uh, the same magistrate from you know, will be heading that up, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, would, we, would it be beneficial, you think, or, uh, or whether we just set it maybe in one of our uh, 
Maybe we put it on our agenda a bit prior to that taking off, but we just we leave it open to a good discussion or informational bit. You know what I mean? So that everybody's up to date and aware of what you know what's involved with it and how it works. In that mm -hmm. time what do you mean? Like just just to present to the public a, a broad oh to the public health council okay, okay, okay. yeah not the council well i mean sure. yes council as well but just mm -hmm. so everyone in the city got as much information on how the process works and what, what it all entails and who runs it and, and how and why and just you know who up in your life yeah that's a good council to, to run you know i think we've done a good job we'll have pamphlets and stuff like that it's no different than any other court that you've been to you get a ticket to show up and you right. pay online and you show up right. Mm -hmm. right. For all. sure. But yeah, we're excited to get that done. I'm excited to get off the plate. Right. Okay, no one else or nothing else? We're moving on. Two comments from members of the public. If you have any questions, comments, please go to the podium and your name and address and try to keep it to five minutes, please. For our tools. Hi, uh, Julie Reese. I'm from Bethel Township. And uh, in full disclosure, I am a township trustee, but I am here speaking as a citizen uh, for myself, not on behalf of the trustees or the township in any way. So um, I just uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to say, so last time I um, stood up here and I told you why I think we should not annex, we don't want to be annexed. So, at the end of that meeting, there were some things that were said that I think weren't quite right about a type two expedited annexation petition. So I just want to say a couple things about that. Um, so the, the township trustees have no say in an annexation petition. There's no vote to accept or reject a petition. The county commissioners only vote to accept or reject a petition based on the state's seven item list of criteria. If the petition meets the criteria, the seven items, then they must vote to, <clears throat> excuse me, they must vote to approve the submitted petition. So the bottom line is that only the municipality, New Carlisle in this case, can stop annexation. There's two places in the process where that can happen. One is you can vote no to providing the services. And the second is, should it pass, the list of the seven criteria, then you can also just vote no to annexation. So I just wanted to be clear that the laws do favor the municipality. They put the choice of annexation entirely in your hands. And um, in addition, if it does get annexed, you then control the zoning entirely. Again, the township has no say. So as you've heard in the past, we value our rural feel and so desire a very low density. Our current zoning uh, in the township is that if you're going to build, you build on two acres. So that should give you an idea. And the last thing I wanted to say is the other thing that seems to come up is that um, there is no legal obligation for you to vote to annex. It's, I've heard people say this, so I just, want to, I just want to be clear on that as well, that you, the choice is yours. It's not, a, it's not a matter of legal. The legal part is for the county commissioners if they meet the seven item criteria. But on your guys', there's no legal obligation to either vote to supply the services or to accept the annexation. Thank you. Any questions? Last time I sat down, let me ask questions. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Jeff Morford, 4720, starts the scarf. Uh, see, I've sat listening to this meeting for the last couple of weeks, waiting for your city manager to retract a statement from the last meeting regarding his false statement about the agreement with Miami County Bethel Township. People who attend these meetings or watch them from home should be able to trust and believe the statements and information they hear are true. This is the third time your city manager has misled or misrepresented. Miami County, Bethel Township on board, Miami County in agreement. I don't hear anything from you guys. Whatever the outcome of this proposed development, we deserve the truth. Two, I still ask the council now to offer water and sewage to DDC management 
The council has mentioned a few times they fear the city would get sued. Maybe, maybe not. Also, if this is the way DDC does business, maybe this is not the company you want to invite into your town. Next, if the annexation happens and services are made available, the city council can still vote not to change the zoning. Just leave it zoned agricultural. Three, the city council has mentioned a few times that according to the city charter or bylaws, that the council aids in the growth and development of New Carlisle. I believe that the council also needs to serve and protect the residents of New Carlisle. Also act and respond as reflection of the people who voted them into office and entrusted them to act as their representatives as it relates to schools, morals, accessible types of business, and yes, growth and development. Some communities have enacted restricted growth rates to grow at a rate acceptable to the community and in areas that would not cause irreparable damage to habitat and environment. Silver Lake, swimming has been offered as part of the activities since the 1900s. The water quality testing has been required by the county for many years. The lake has never been shut down or swimming restricted. The Ohio Department of Natural Resources has been on the property since the 1940s. The University of Dayton has been on the property a number of times, as well as the University of Cincinnati. The Miami County Park District has an environmental easement on the portion of the wetlands, documenting the valley, the lake, and the miles of wetlands downstream. The ecosystem in jeopardy, so I suggest that the quality of this ecosystem is negatively affected Anyone involved with DDC's 300 house development will be held responsible. The excavating company, the builders, the sellers of the houses, the buyers of the houses. The city of New Carlisle will all, all be held legally responsible. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> all right, anyone else? All righty, moving on. <clears throat> oh, let's see. Committee reports, uh, charter review, uh, and uh, Parks and Rec Board, and other than a few of the I assume there's no update for them. And then we drop down to resolutions. Ms. Burner, I'll hand it over to you, please. Okay, we have resolution 2022-09, introduction, public hearing and action tonight. A resolution supporting the 2022 Miami Valley Water Compact. Mr. Mayor, move to accept resolution. 2022 and for an explanation of this ordinance, I will let Mr. Uh, Vice Mayor Grimm discuss the business you requested the ordinance. As I said at the last meeting, I attended a meeting regarding the Fremont City landfill. Um, <coughs> it's full of barrels, a lot of them have toxic waste in them. If those barrels start leaking into the aquifer, uh, everybody in the greater Miami Valley is without water. Um, the cleanup has been approved by the EPA, uh, but we're dealing with the federal government, so they need to be urged on it. Um, and that's what this, one of the reasons for this compact, uh, to show them that we are unified in saving our water. Any other questions or comments, Council? When you're ready, Ms. Burner. Okay. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. And Councilman Eggleston. Yes. And that passes 6 0. Moving on to our ordinances, we have Ordinance 2022 14. This is introduced. This was introduced on 4-18-2022, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city of New Carlisle, Ohio to lease Gastineau Baseball Field, property of the city, to the New Carlisle Diamondbacks Adult Baseball Club. Okay, an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, we do this every few uh, years, and this is for the uh, Diamondbacks to have the Gas and no field, and they are great stewards of, of having that facility. They keep it in great shape, but zero issues. Mm -hmm. 
Discussion, Council? Okay. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. That passes 6 to 0. Moving on, we have Ordinance 2022-15. This is Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on May 16th, 2022. An ordinance amending Chapter 1040 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding the city's water utility. We have Ordinance 2022-16, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on May 16th, 2022. An ordinance amending Chapter 1043 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding the city's water and sewer rate structure. We have Ordinance 2022-17, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on May 16, 2022. An ordinance amending Chapter 1041 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding sewer service charges. We have Ordinance 2022-18, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on May 16th, 2022. An ordinance amending Chapter 1042 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding sewer use regulations and user charge system. We have Ordinance 2022-19E, Introduction, Public Hearing and Action Tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to purchase a backup engine and controller for the Honey Creek Sanitary Sewer Lift Station operated and maintained by the city of New Carlisle and declaring an emergency. Move to accept. Second. second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Rodeo. And an explanation of this ordinance. This is a emergency ordinance due to the automatic backup engine and controller at the uh, Honey Creek Mobile uh, Home Park um, is failed. So we need to get that immediately. The, as I put in the email, when I uh, emailed the council packets out, the reason this is an emergency is solely due to the expiration date of the quote, which is May 4th, but it's a very much needed uh, purchase. And we've got two quotes and this one was significantly cheaper by around $12,800. Mm -hmm. Any questions, Council? I just have one. Is it the same quality pump? I mean, we're apples to apples, yeah. brand wise, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, Mr. Kiko took care of all that. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. ready, Ms. Brown. Okay. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Passes 6 to 0. And our last one here, we have Ordinance 2022-20, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on May 16th, 2022. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into an amended contract with waste management for the curbside collection and disposal of residential garbage, refuse, and recyclables in the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Um, would you like me to read other business? Please. All right, we have other business, additional city business, there will be a joint special meeting with Bethel Township, Miami County, to discuss potential annexation. This meeting is Friday, May 13th, 2022, at 6.30 p.m., located at 8735 2nd Street in Tip City, Ohio. Our city offices will be closed Monday, May 30th, to observe Memorial Day and open discussion for other city-related matters. Thank you very much. We'll just have one before we adjourn also we've got to excuse mr lindsay but uh mr bridge uh when will our um recycling switch to every week citywide uh june one i think is when the continent which should pass because you guys need to vote on the next meeting so i think june run is a anticipated start time okay Great. give or take a week i would say okay because it, it a lot of people already have the containers so a little bit more okay council any other questions i have a couple of comments First of all, uh, regarding the ordinance about the Gaston Field, in a previous life, I attended and photographed a number of baseball games there. That is good quality entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's free. Uh, I'm surprised more people don't come out and support my local team. It, it, it was fun. And they have some interesting between inning. <laughs> One time they had a grocery cart race around the bases. Just fun stuff. Nice. Second of all, 
Community cleanup. Yeah. Are we going to do that this year? Oh, I'm sure we will. Mm-hmm. We have a date for oh, um, We have a date well, for Well, usually. Yeah. We'll go with Howie about it. Mm -hmm. yeah, usually it's <coughs> the weekend. We usually have it. It's Second fireworks weekend. Yeah. We usually have it either before or after the community uh, garage sale. So that will be coming up? Yeah, well, I'll get with Mr. Kicker on it. He can bring in more information next to the meeting. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. Um, I have a couple things. On the um, pizza and pop thing with council, we had that scheduled uh, to hold it at the fire station. Mm -hmm. And I suggest I wanted to suggest moving it either to 101 or possibly setting up a tenant farmers market so we don't fall away from the farmers market. No problem with it. Sounds good. One place is going to be next. But I figured if we could find a pop up tent or something that we could put up if down at the farmers market, we might. Be. Be able to reach more people. Okay. Chief? We have a pop up tent from the department of community. Yeah, exactly. And then we have um, table skirts for this. They're labeled New Carlisle. We, were, we got them like two years ago and we haven't been able to use them because COVID. So okay. it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. I'll get with farmers market. Did you guys set that by motion? If you said it the original date by motion, it wouldn't have to be. Uh, it's been a couple meetings ago. I think it was done by motion. Well, she's yeah. not changing the date. She's just changing. Just the changing the location. location. Right, but I think everything was set by motion. You guys did it all. Uh, yeah, just make a motion and change it. Maybe we change the pizza and pop with council to the farmers market instead of fire station. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Mr. Cook. Since we're going to be changing this to the farmer's market, do we want to go back to the donuts and coffee and forget the pizza? What time is the farmer's market? Well, are we doing, we're doing it at the one where they're doing the 8 o'clock part of the evening farmer's market, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that is. No, easy. I thought you had it at 11 to 1 or something. The date is 18th. I got the 18th. Yeah, it's the 18th. I think we picked the lunch time, like 11 to 1. No, it's 11. Yeah, we were going to do a lunch time. We were going to do, yeah, noon to 2 is what I... Noon to 2? Noon to 2 on the 18th. So, I will still be... Not that way, though. Yeah, we'll still be... We'll still be lunch. Yeah. It, the, I think he said just donuts oh, yeah. instead of... Sorry, I don't know why I was looking at you. Well, I'm, I'm just <laughs> inquiring, you know, based on donuts, I'm, I'm much more a donut than pizza. Early in the morning, do you want to do the donuts and coffee rather than pizza? Well, but just do both call today. Pizza, donuts, and council. But the time is from noon to two. <laughs> well, if we're setting up the farmer's market, well, I'm sure some of us will be down there when it opens. Here, there you go. Let's just do both, and then if one falls through, you got the backup. Boom. Okay, so let can you amend it to say all the things and stuff that okay. time wise and stuff? I it'll move that we do the pizza, pop, and donuts with council. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and will the time be like a nine to two span just to cover everyone in case? Sure, you all come at different times. If there's more than one of you, you are all covered, right? Yeah. Are you Donuts, pizza, shrimp. Donut, pizza, <laughs> bird. <laughs> Steak. Steak. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Are we good to vote on it now? Yes. All right. So I've got donuts, pizza, and pop at the farmer's market, 9 to 2, June 18th. Correct? Yes. <coughs> All right. <coughs> Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Rodwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. And Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. That passes 6 0. 11. 11. 11. The summoner is open then? 11. 11. Okay. I will also need a motion to excuse Mr. Lindsay from tonight's meeting. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Cook, second by Mr. Bond. Okay. Ben Bond. Just had to do it. 
Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Passes 6 0. <laughs> Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't even cut you off. Um, I I just wanted to uh, say I don't know if anybody else took Marianne up on her offer to give it to her. Mm -hmm. um, I did, and I would highly suggest everybody else doing it too. I would also highly suggest not walking it and let her <laughs> to take you on her gator. <laughs> because I walked it. <laughs> but it's, it answered a lot of questions and created a lot more questions, so. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Nope, that's it. you. Sure. Another thing I have is just a reminder to everybody, tomorrow's election day. Mm -hmm. Make sure you vote. Um, it's one of our things that has been fought for and died for and there's a lot of good candidates and I just want to remind everybody to make sure you do that tomorrow. But first educate yourself on the issues and the candidates. Don't go by sound bites. Don't go by yard sign. We can do it. We'll apply that to everything in life, yeah. not just elections. <laughs> yeah. Let's not just fill in the blanks with what makes sense in our head. Let's get facts. It didn't work good in high school. It did not. A, B, C, D, A, B, C. I tried to crack the pattern so many times. Yeah, it never, never works. <laughs> well, we need a motion to excuse Mr. Lindsay. We did that already. We did that already. I'm sorry. We're good. I'm sorry. Right before you did bomb, bend bomb. That's right. No, okay. All right, anything else? A motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Mr. Roadball, second by Mr. Barnes. Okay. You're not going to say that? No. Okay. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. And Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Motion to adjourn accepted 6 0. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you.